AWS reInvent warrants uh, more than one segment. So much going on, Pat. And of course, even doing two segments, we're barely going to scratch the surface. Uh, you and I did an awesome pod with Dave Brown, the VP uh, over at AWS, and, and I'll let you kind of handle that one. But I'm going to start off here also talking about AIML, because while we weren't there for the keynote, there was a ton of announcements made. And I'll put a link in the in the show notes, but I wrote a research note looking at what I call the six new reasons to adopt and use SageMaker. So one of the big things that I thought came out of this event was the company being much more compelling in terms of its SageMaker offering. They have what's called the Studio Notebook or, you know, uh, you know, greater collaboration across designs, um, new machine learning uh, compiler, uh, making training more efficient, automatic compute instance selection. But, you know, just kind of a quick rundown, because I, I don't want to do the news necessarily, but I just kind of want to talk about what's going on. First of all, thematically, I think AWS recognizes the importance to make AWS much more available, democratizing it so that more uh, people beyond your, you know, higher profile data scientists are able to benefit from uh, from AI and ML. So, for instance, one of the first big announcements was what they call Amazon SageMaker Canvas No Code ML predictions. Um, basically, again, democratizing, expanding access, giving business analysts, people in finance or marketing, operations, human resources, uh, a visual interface that allows them to you know, develop accurate ML predictions. Uh, you've got what's called a SageMaker Ground Truth, it's a managed data labeling service. Um, they have their new Studio Universal Notebooks. Uh, this was a big one, and that's a basically a complete integrated development environment for ML. Um, it's a single environment. You can do data engineering, analytics, machine learning. Um, so this will be very helpful for you know enabling built-in development environments for things like writing, monitoring, debugging. Um, uh, so that's another one. Then of course there was a handful of others. They had a SageMaker training compiler. SageMaker uh, inference recommender, and then a serverless inference for ML models. So there's a lot. I'm not going to run down all the news because you can read the piece. But the theme for me was all about the fact that Amazon and AWS understands the need to be able to bring a larger swath of its user base, especially that business community, those people in those roles, into its uh, ML services uh, with SageMaker. And that was really a big part of what was being delivered here. You know, thematically, with these capabilities, I think they're going to create more inroads. And, and like I said, I think AWS has always had a very compelling offering, but they're going to continue to push. And Pat, we always talk about that here on the show. You know, innovation pushes competition, competition pushes innovation. It's a big circle. But what they're doing here is going to push Azure. It's going to push Google Cloud, Oracle, Red Hat, IBM, HPE, uh, even Alibaba. Um, all of them are going to have to keep going and keep developing. Because essentially, you know, SageMaker now continues to grow, and with everything AWS is doing, uh, you know, over $16 billion in revenue a quarter, uh, still keeping 30 plus percent growth. And some of their AIML numbers are very impressive 100 billion predictions a month, million labeling tasks per day. And, and the company, of course, as you've seen or heard, has got a really uh, significant customer list with everyone from, you know, we talked about BMW to the NFL um, using a SageMaker service to train ML models. So a good set of announcements, very encouraging for the company. Again, AWS reInvent was a really strong event. 